Good evening, Redbirds. I'm excited to have you uh, with us tonight for another great virtual summer tour. We will get started just right here in a minute. We're going to let folks log on, give them a chance to join us. Welcome, Redbirds. I am seeing some familiar names. We're very excited to have everybody with us tonight for our second, um, second virtual tour in our summer historical series. So many of you have signed up for the whole series and that's exciting. Some of you are just joining us for one and that's exciting too. Um, so we're thank you for being here. Just letting folks log in. Welcome Redbirds. Give it a few more minutes. We'll get folks in here. So excited to have you with us on this very warm July day. Many of you are coming from outside of Bloomington Normal. So I'm assuming your weather might be similar or different, but it's very warm here in Normal, Illinois on campus. It's gorgeous on campus right now. Flowers are blooming. All righty, we'll go ahead and get started. My name is Stephanie Duquesne and I am a director over in alumni engagement here at Illinois State University. And I have the honor of hosting our summer virtual tours. We have uh, two great speakers with us. Uh, many of you have uh, participated in our first of our series of historical uh, tours. And uh, we have our host back. We have Barb Dallinger and April Anderson Zorn. So I'm gonna introduce them so you can get to know them just a little bit more. Barb Dallinger is a Central Illinois native, received both her bachelor's in music education and master's of science in education in college student personnel administration from Illinois State University. Barb is also employed by Illinois State for the last 30 years. She has worked in both the College of Fine Arts and various positions in the Division of Student Affairs, including university housing services, campus dining services, the Bone Student Center, and she currently manages Braden Auditorium. She is the Associate Director for Events Catering, uh, events and Catering with Event Management, Dining, and Hospitality. That one always trips me up. Her achievements include being named Advisor of the Year, receiving the Distinguished Service Award from Illinois State University, the Women in Communication Innovation Award, and the Neil R. Gamsky Quality of Student Life Award. Barb's one constant has been the passion and dedication she brings to each job and the enjoyment she has received working with our Illinois State University students. So help me virtually welcome Barb Dallinger. And joining her tonight, hi Barb. Hi. Joining her tonight is April Anderson Zorn. April is the university's archivist for Illinois State University. Anderson Zorn earned her master's degrees in library and information science from Florida State University and in history from the University of Central Florida. She is a certified archivist through the Academy of Certified Archivists and holds a digital archives specialist certificate through the Society of American Archivists. Anderson Zorn has also worked as an archives consultant, partnering with a number of academic institutions and companies to help set up their archive programs. So please help me welcome April. Yay. Hello, April. <laughs> Hello, everyone. How are we all doing tonight? You all are in for a treat. Um, we are going to be, this virtual tour will be covering the history um, of our athletics facilities, which the first time, I think it was the first time we did a virtual tour with April and Barb was over spring homecoming this past mm -hmm. April. Yeah. Um, with April and Barb and uh, super well received. We did a tour of the quad and our attendees wanted more. And we surveyed them and asked them what they would want. And one of the things that they identified was they'd like to hear some history about athletics facilities and how they came to be where they are now. And April said, we can do that. And Barb said, I will learn and I can do that too. <laughs> <laughs> so here they are tonight to chat about our athletic facilities. So I'm going to hop off camera. If you have any uh, questions or comments, I will hop back on camera towards the end, closer to our uh, seven o'clock time and get those answered for you. So hang tight. I'll be keeping track of your questions 
and, uh, and, and if they haven't been answered by the time I hop back on, we'll make sure to touch on those. So enjoy yourselves, sit back, and uh, here's April and Barb. <sighs> Hi, everybody. Welcome back. Welcome back. Uh, if you get take it for a moment, Barb, I'm going to go and throw the presentation up here in just a second. Okay. Well, we're really glad that everybody came back. I have to admit, I did not have a great deal of knowledge about our athletic facilities either. So I have learned a great deal from this, and April's been a wonderful resource. And there are some true hidden gems here. I was very excited. So I think this is going to be way more fun than I thought it was going to be. I'm very <laughs> excited. Well, look, I'm going to I'm going to throw my my warning out. So I'm sure there's some of you that are uh, on this call now or are going to use this in the future that that may be lettered in a sport or, you know, uh, earned a lot of points. Um, and I'm going to tell you right now, I am. Um, I am not a numbers gal. So um, if you're like, April, why didn't you mention this, mention this statistic in this particular sport? I, we're we're, we're going to talk about the history of the, of the sport and the facilities that was used and were created for those sports. Um, if you really, really, really need a stat, please email us and we'll get you that stat later. But right now <laughs> we're going to we're going to focus on the history of the, of the facilities. Uh, so let me go to. The first slide. So, uh, the first slide. What I want to show you, I want to set the stage before we really jump into some of these historic photos. Which I'm gonna, we're gonna let these photos flip through as we talk to you uh, about the history of these facilities. Um, where we are right now in this picture. This is I just literally stole it from Google Maps. Uh, this is the campus uh, as you would see it on Google Maps. The circle that you see there, that is the quad. So right there in the middle is the quad. Uh, north, south, east, west. For some of you old Maine folks who might have been here for old Maine, old Maine would approximately be at the top of that circle, uh, under that line up at the top of that circle. Um, but that's where we are in the quad. The south campus fields are toward the bottom of that circle. Um, so for our newer alum, alumni, think of State Farm. Uh, the State Farm building is actually where those fields used to be, but when there wasn't a State Farm building, we had south campus fields. So let me go to the next. So just again, there is a just a, to kind of get us situated. Where are we at uh, currently on the map? We are in South Campus Fields. Uh, so technically speaking, the South Campus Fields are really as old as the university, as far back as 1857. Um, and and for all intents and purposes, it's probably some of our our oldest uh, really facilities that we've had until the building of State Farm our State Farm Hall that went up uh, uh, several years ago. But until that point, a lot of the athletics fields were found there. They held several sports, including track, football, baseball, field hockey, you name it. It was probably, there was some, uh, some location there. And in fact, the photo that you're looking at right here uh, to the east of Central, excuse me, South Campus, there's tennis courts. And those tennis course, courts moved uh, a couple of different times when they were located in South Campus. In the South Campus Fields, they were at one point where the Performing Arts Center is now, and then they moved west. Oh, so they moved all over the place. Here's a picture of homecoming, uh, one of many homecoming pictures you'll see from archives here in the next several months as we get closer to our 100th anniversary of homecoming. Uh, the football field was in South Campus Fields and parades went through that field. So this is part of the parade that happened at the time. So over time, as the fields changed, um, the, they, they you know, moved around a South Campus and they morphed into different kinds of fields as the games progressed and the, the way that the sport was played uh, changed. Uh, the West Campus, what we know now is sort of the athletic center of campus over on West Campus, that started to develop in the 1960s with the building and opening of Horton Field House and McCormick Field, which we're going to talk about. We're going to show you some photos of that. Uh, and that's when we started to see the slow movement of athletics over oh. to that side of campus. Um, the, like I said, the tennis uh, field, of course, changed. And so it moved a couple different times to South Campus and then eventually moved over to West Campus. So it really was a slow merge of those sports over to West Campus eventually. That's Phil um, Hall right behind them, right? It is. Well, yes, it is. That was Phil Hall. In fact, you can just see McCormick oh. in the back of this photo right there. 
Um, and another fun little tidbit, which I'll throw out before I hand it back over to Barb, uh, that this was, these fields are often called McCormick fields before, some of you might go, wait a minute, McCormick field was actually over in West Campus, as it was. There were two locations referred to as McCormick field. This one, because it was next to McCormick uh, gym. And then as those fields started to move, we started, we had McCormick fields over on West side. Uh, so a couple different places from McCormick Field, but this, these, exactly, Barb, you pointed out, that was Fell, that was behind the baseball diamond. There's McCormick there in the background for football. So we had lots of sports down uh, in South Campus at one point or another through, throughout the history of the university. Wow. I know um, for a while that South Campus Field area was also where the marching band practiced because it was so close to the School of Music area. The marching band practiced there quite a bit. I remember when they built the, the State Farm Hall of Business building, the campus felt so different walking on that quad because all of a sudden it was closed in and it had never been closed in. And students had used that area so much just for pickup games of what have you. And the feel was just so different when they did that. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, we're all closed up. That's a common sentiment that I that I encounter with alumni. You really can tell the difference uh, in really a, a generation, frankly. The alumni who remember South Campus as being an open quad and the alumni that know it as a closed quad and that traditional closed quad feel now because of, yeah. because of State Farm. Yeah. Well, and you know what they play on the quad now when they're playing on the quad. We have a Quidditch team. That's a secret. Quidditch. <laughs> we have a Quidditch team and they play Quidditch out there which is quite fun to watch. Ravenclaw. <laughs> exactly. not, not that I have, not that I'm. <laughs> Ravenclaw. <laughs> <laughs> so next on our list. And so again, some of you are going to go, why the buildings? Well, some of these buildings, when they were originally constructed, have some uh, historical connection to our athletic programs on campus. The next one is Cook Hall, which was, we've covered Cook Hall before in a couple of our presentations in 1895 when it first opened. Um, and here is a picture of it not long after it opened in 1895. So really this was one of those, it was great when we finally got it. The original intent of that building was to be a dormitory. There were no dormitories on campus uh, really prior to the opening of Fell Hall in the late 19 teens. Uh, so both Edward and Hewitt, presidents Edward and Hewitt, our second and third presidents respectively, really fought to get a dormitory and failed. Uh, really, Cook was the one, our fourth president, that got the funds finally for the building. Uh, and the deal was, no, it's not going to be a dorm, it's going to be a gym. So you'll see some of these photos here of what the interior liked. And yes, that is a raised uh, running um, uh, track there that you see in the photo. Um, what's that, Barb? That just puts fear in my heart. Oh my Lord. And this totally does. Holy cow. The running part or the, or the elevated? <laughs> Nightmares. The hanging from the rope. Oh my heavens. I know, right? I mean, that's just, that's just some broken limbs waiting to happen. Well, and never mind <laughs> the heavy outfits that these poor ladies are having to wear while they're working out in the gym. It's kind of nuts. Yes. Um, so before anybody jumps into the, hey, what about the castle thing, y'all? So we recognize the castle thing, and, and I, I have opinions on the castle thing. I'm happy to address the opinions about the castle thing <laughs> toward the end, but we, we did build the, the facility under the leadership of Governor John P. Altgad when he was governor of Illinois, who had a thing for the, the castle look, and that was part of the deal that the way that we got the building is that it had to look like a castle, so... Well, and plus we'd had a lot of trouble with Old Main. Yes. You know, fire oh, yes. and flood, fire and flood. So he, you know, stone will be good mm -hmm. last. Exactly. exactly. And if you'll take a look in that photo, I wanted to throw this in for all my librarian friends out there. The library, this was the second location of the university library uh, in Cook Hall. And in fact, if you look real close, that that little lady sitting there at that desk, that is Angeline Vernon Milner. That is oh. the big of Milner Library sitting at that desk uh, oh. at the library. Yeah, we're that's oh. a really one of the few photos that we have of her sort of in action. And I love this photo. So I had to throw that in there a little non athletics, but I don't know, walking walking a library, I think is athletic enough. So I had to throw that oh. in there. You got anything you want to add on Cook Hall there, Barb? 
not really just that it's currently the school of music and they've managed to somehow redo that inside. So it works with the practice facilities and the different studios. It is cool to walk by the quad and the different, the different student groups are like just sitting out on the steps practicing. And that's, that's fun to hear. Or you walk by and you hear some crazy flute player just doing wonderful things. It's, it adds a lot to the ambiance down there. <laughs> Well, and the sculpture that lives out there now too, I think really adds to the beauty and the ambiance of the, of the yeah. entire, of that entire landscape for sure. Yeah. So let's see, next on the list then, we have McCormick. So we mentioned McCormick briefly. I mean, McCormick has a little bit of a history in terms of the uh, name, the name and why, uh, how the names changed over time because it wasn't always McCormick. So there on the picture, you'll see where the circle is. It's just to the south of Fell Hall. Uh, and then again, south of McCormick was where the field used to be, hence McCormick Field. So that building uh, right there in that photo, actually, that was originally named for President Felmley. He is still to this day our longest serving president uh, of 30 years. Uh, so when the building was constructed in 1925, it was Felmley Gym when it first opened. However, when President Felmley stepped aside and stepped down, he died not long after he left the presidency. The Hall of Science was being constructed at the time. So President Brown here in this photo uh, did a name change. Yeah, and this is, they have little, the podiums up and the plants are up and they did a, a ceremonial name change. Uh, McCormick is actually a, a geography professor and alumni, Henry McCormick, who was here for about 43 years. Um, and then the Family Hall of Science was named for Family in his honor not long after his passing. Um, but as you can imagine, it was the it was a true gym. It was an athletics facility. Here is some, I believe this is basketball happening outside uh, with, again, why are we putting the ladies in all the fabric? I don't know. So much fabric. Uh, so there's a photo of some ladies playing basketball out on the south end of uh, McCormick Gym. And it was a popular athletics facility of the time. Oh. Oh, and I love, and here, here's the interior of the gym. Again, I say, look at the difference in these photos. Those are some short shorts, not a lot. Of, and they're wearing, man, I'll tell you what, <laughs> why, why can't we have, why couldn't those ladies, you know, lose a couple of layers? I mean, I know why, but still. Uh, you know, anything you want to add to that, Barb? Fun fact. One of the most common questions that I would, oh, we're swimming. One of the most common questions I would get when I was doing the campus tours, everybody on the tour, they would look up and they would say, what's that medallion on the top of McCormick? And for the first, I don't know, six months, I went, I don't know, not sure. And then decided, well, perhaps we should find that out. It's a weight belt. Mm -hmm. It's a weight belt wrapping around a medallion. It was like, who knew? Mm -hmm. Very athletics of them. Yeah. <laughs> to put exactly. it on. To put it on. Yeah. Really the, I, the gym. I hadn't even noticed it until like the first person asked me. They're like, what's that up there? I'm like, huh. I mean, I'm short. I don't look that high. It's like, yeah, there are things up there. All y'all are gonna walk past McCormick now and look for this look for this weight belt. Exactly. <laughs> One picture back there showed a great picture. And and truth also too, just before I forget to mention it, um, there is pool. There's a pool right there. There is some uh, synchronized swimming happening, but there is a pool also in. Uh, and McCormick, and this is one of, I actually, I really enjoy this. Anything that has to do with synchronized swimming, I actually enjoy. So I, I wanted to throw that in there to kind of show folks the pool that's in McCormick. Yeah. So let me go to the next facility on the list, which on the timeline is Hancock. So Hancock Stadium, uh, which opened in 1963. So on the map, there is the quad. They're sort of in the middle right. And if we look up toward the top, there's the circle. We're just across main street on the west side so this along with uh, uh horton field house which we'll talk about next was sort of the official move over to west campus the facilities that opened up west campus so here's a couple photos of what that looked like when those facilities opened uh where they stand is actually the old location of the university farm 
Um, and part of the university farm, one of the buildings actually still stands there. It's the glass blowing facility. Um, yeah. That was one of the original buildings that, that belonged to the university farm at the time. Uh, so really, and I actually need to back myself up a little bit. We had already jumped over Main Street to the west side, even before these buildings uh, went up. We had Cardinal Court, which was opened on the west side to house students who were coming back for married students. Uh, so uh, Cardinal Court went up, but really the athletics portion, if you will, of west side really kind of came with these facilities. Uh, the facility was opened on September 21st, 1963, with around 7,500 uh, folks in attendance, which at that time was the largest crowd for a sporting event on campus. And we beat Milliken 12 to 7. So yay, first, first game, we beat them. Um, so the facility is named for Howard Hancock, who was both an athletic director and a football coach on our campus. Uh, 1931 for both of those and served as athletic director till 1963 and was actually football coach until 1945. So he was coach and then stepped down as coach and really focused his energies on being athletic director until 63 uh, when the facility opened. Uh, and then, of course, in 2013, a lot of us remember, and I was already here on campus for this and it was exciting to watch, uh, was the renovation of Hancock Stadium yeah. uh, when President Bowman supported and pushed through the uh, the East Side Stadium bleachers, which were updated with a new press box and event facilities. It's a real, real swanky joint they made over there. So we've really upgraded uh, that area of Hancock Stadium um, uh, for use now. I know a more, shall we say, senior alum told me once that getting to sit in this like card station that had a name was quite competitive and quite like it was high pressure. So if you didn't get that card up there at the right time. So it was kind of a big deal. Mm -hmm. um, and we know that when we switched from ISU to I, from ISNU to ISU during the football season at every game, that N, they would spell ISNU on, on the field. And at each, each week, the N would get smaller and they would cl get closer together till the very last game it was a piece of cardboard with the N on it. And they basically played something and the N ran off the field and the ISU squished together. And we were done with the football season. And in January, they signed the name change. It was like, how exciting. I thought that was such a fun idea. I'll tell you what, I could do a whole presentation on that name change. <laughs> the, the couple of name changes we had, that was definitely Definitely an interesting time, but yeah, that's right. The end shrank down until finally, poof, was gone. Magically disappeared. I did so, see some of the suggested names. The sorry, like, what? I, I saw some, like the mm. voting of some of the suggested mm. names, and some were just crazy. <laughs> well, it was the 60s bar, but there was a lot of crazy ideas floating around in the 60s. Wow. <laughs> I mean, some, some were longer, and it's like, why do you want to get longer? <laughs> well, you know, more letters, you can shove them on a shirt. So, you know, everybody, everybody likes those, everybody likes those sporting athletic shirts with all the letters on them. That's true. Let's go to the oh next. Oh my gosh, Kathy, your great uncle was Howard Hancock? <gasps> How? Jeez. Oh, April is so going to talk to you. I'm not looking at the chat. We're going to have a chat. We're, I'm, I'm not looking at the chat chat, but, but we're going to have a chat. Anyway, so <laughs> let me... <laughs> Um, That's awesome. That is that is pretty cool. Um, let's jump over to Horton, which is sort of the sister facility uh, to McCormick. So Horton Fieldhouse opened the same week um, as uh, as the other facility. So September 16th was the week that it opened to coincide with Hancock Stadium opening. And there's some of you that that love the history of Gamma Phi. Well, you'll love to know that it was named for Clifford E. Pop Horton, nicknamed Pop founder of Gamify and, and really the, the gentleman who coined the term Redbirds and why we are Redbirds is really thanks in most part to Clifford Horton. Uh, so the new field house included a whew, 70 foot, 75 by 75 foot pool, a six lane track, which I was able to drive my car into one day, I gotta say. I was able to bring yeah. my car into cool. the field house and set a, set a thing up, it was kind of cool. Uh, a basketball court, bleachers to hold up, uh, 8,000 spectators and more. Um, it was really the new home for the School of Kinesiology and Recreation, uh, where it had been over at McCormick and now they were moving over and this was gonna be their new home. 
once again, uh, we're hanging. I know. I exactly. You know, <laughs> you point, it's kind of crazy. And again, I mean, like at least their shorts are getting shorter. So at least they're like, <laughs> there's some breathing room and what they're wearing, but goodness gracious, they're stretching them out. Uh, here's a basketball game in Horton. So for some of you who were here during some of our more famous Redbird athletes time, including Doug Collins, you'll remember Doug Collins playing on this court. And the reason why there is a statue, which I was going to put a picture in there. We have the famous photo that Will Robinson, Coach Will Robinson and Doug Collins took uh, for the model for the statue that's out out in that area now where you can go out and see that statue. It's really roughly around north of Redbird Arena, southwest of Horton. Um, but we do have pictures that they took that was later the, used for the model to make that. Uh, this is the first graduation. This is the first graduation held in Horton in 1963. And if you're really into, uh, into music, the very first entertainment act that was held in Horton Fieldhouse was wait for it, let's see who remembers, Peter, Paul, and Mary on October 6, wow. 1963. And of course, many, 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 many other bands played in Horton over the years. Yes. Mm -hmm. I swear after you went to a concert there, you couldn't hear it for days. <laughs> it was so loud. It was so loud. We went to Chicago and it was days and your ears are just, ah, it's so much better now because I've got more room in Redbird Arena, but whoa. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we get a lot of requests for graduation photos at archives, which were not individual, these larger graduation photos, which we're always happy to try and fill. So please let us know if you're looking for something. But we were, we're really fortunate, I think, to have this photo kind of seeing Horton uh, really yeah. filled, filled in its prime. And this is the first graduation that was held here. So, so before that, were they still in Sherwood Forest? I believe, yeah, they were still down in Sherwood. I have photos of Dr. Bone actually in that area. Very, it just depends on the weather. So if it was wow. going to rain, they had different locations that they were in. Um, but yeah, for the most part, it was in, again, South Campus Fields. So they were having their graduation ceremonies down there. Um, it was kind of the the all all purpose uh, gathering location back in the day for for the university. Wow. Yeah. So let's go to our next facility. Uh, we have, speaking of, we have Redbird Arena in 1939. So this has its own long history of how it finally came to be, um, but it was first announced in 1984 and came with a student fee increase that had to be approved, which that was a whole thing. Wasn't, and then it finally was. Uh, when it finally was, the plans were revamped because the organizers said, oh, this is too expensive. But if finally, by 1986, construction started. And look, I, you've seen our presentations before where I've talked about theater construction. I'm kind of a kind of a construction nerd, an architect, ner arch architectural nerd. I love these architectural photos of Redbird Arena. For the, for the time that this was built, at the time it was built, this was the only one of its kind in the world, the way that they created the roof of this yeah. building. Um, I mean, the look roof at the cars even. Even the yeah. car, you know. Yeah, was. it's absolutely insane. Uh, and, and the fact that we have color photos of this also speaks to just how lucky we are to have Nelson Smith's photograph collection from for the history of the university. Um, Redbird was, or Redbird Arena was built on the old uh, baseball field and uh, closed that baseball field in 1986. And then of course the, the Duffy, Bath, Duffy Bass field for baseball eventually moved over where it is now. Uh, the roof, as you saw in those construction photos, uh, was, like I said, it was one of its kind. Basically, what you have are these panels that were Teflon coated and then kind of woven into the roof of that arena so that what it looks like, and there are 24 different panels that are there so that when the lights are on, and here, like in this graduation photo, when the lights are on, especially at night, it looks like the roof is glowing. There's a soft glow to the roof. But actually, Barb, when you and I were talking for this presentation, kind of prepping for yeah. it, you made a really or good point that, frankly, I didn't even think about. Yeah, the um, for about five years, I was in charge of commencement and in Redbird, right? And we were trying to find a way to get the students' names in real time across the top of the screen so that as somebody went across the stage, it would say their name. And we couldn't get the arena dark enough during the daytime commencement ceremonies 
so that you can even read it. I mean, we tried all kinds of different things. And really the evening ceremony on Friday night for arts and sciences was the only one it would have worked on because it is, it's daylight in there because of the roof, it was crazy. Mm -hmm. Uh, the facility opened on, officially opened on January 11th, 1989, and became the new home for men and women's basketball and volleyball, which it is now. And again, on February 3rd, 2007, our old buddy Doug Collins, the name, the court for Doug Collins there in Redbird Arena. So when you go and see games now, maybe, maybe we'll see games soon. We'll see some games in Redbird Arena here in the near future. Uh, when you see games, you'll see his name on, fittingly on the court. Yeah, they did. Um, when I started, when I when I started being in charge of commencement, you couldn't walk the entire lower bowl because it wasn't done. But since I started that in like I don't know, oh five, oh six, they've completed several areas and added like weight rooms and more locker rooms and stuff. And you can actually walk. You can now what this many years later, you can actually walk the complete circle around the back. That's cool. I don't think I ever, oh, oh, I'm going to do that now. I didn't think you could, yeah. Literally, if you went too far, you hit dirt. And it was just like, <laughs> dang, I went the wrong way. And I would scurry back around, um, <laughs> occasionally cut across. But if yeah. only you had a Fitbit in the day, right? <laughs> oh, no Fitbit. kidding. No <laughs> kidding. <laughs> no kidding. All right, well, let's go to our, and actually, again, too, this photo, I believe, this, I believe this is the first photo of commencement to take place in Redbird Arena as well. If I, if I pulled this correctly, I believe this is also the first Redbird Arena commencement as well. So let's go to the next. Now, I kind of put these two together because they're near-ish each other, and it just makes sense to kind of bring them both together and talk about them. Uh, so the near stadium, which opened in 1999 in Bassfield, which has, you know, 1988 and it moved and then was renovated and reopened in 2008. Uh, the Marion near red ball softball complex opened on April 3rd, 1999. Uh, and I'll have a picture here. Actually, I, and I'm going to, I'm going to apologize in advance. This, the, the, the photos that we have go to around the early to mid 1990s and particularly for athletics, we don't have a picture of the softball field. The best I can do are these aerial photos here. Um, and again, try towers, which we'll kind of briefly talk about here toward the end, uh, where you can see these fields and what these fields look like from an aerial perspective, which I think is kind of cool. Uh, so the near Red Ball, Redbird softball complex, which opened in 99, uh, here's one photo of the baseball team, which I should have flipped this around. Um, the baseball team, which was our only uh, uh, national champion at the time. And then we'll have the women's softball team here in a second. You'll see uh, when they were glorious when they won. Uh, so softball played in the uh, near stadium um, for approximately, was in that location for around 31 years in the late 1960s, um, really in South Campus before they moved over to that location. Um, and really it was kind of South Campus Fields where they were before they moved over to West Campus in the 1960s where they, where they eventually stayed and lived. Um, but they were for a good 30 or so years in South Campus Fields before they moved over to West Side. Uh, it was named for Marion Neer, who was an alum and a donor who unfortunately passed away this past July. Uh, and so here's what I was referring to earlier. This is the 1969 softball team that played in the first ever Women's College World Series and were the runner up squad. And this is them celebrating oh. with, their, with their trophy. So I was really happy to find that. I love um, this picture, they're so isn't that Isn't that a fab, and actually, if you look close, I believe that's that central campus, which we talked about last presentation for. Yeah, is that, is that Barton? Is I that think Barton? it's, I think it might be Barton. I, I, I'm almost pot. Somebody's going to tell us in the comments, I'm sure, in the chat. But I believe that might be Barton. But they're they're at Central Campus and they're celebrating at Central Campus when they come back from that. That's room. exciting. Yeah. Um, the other photo, which again I switched them, and I didn't mean to do that. I apologize. The other photo was actually Redbird baseball from '69. They were the only team to win a national championship in ISU history. There was, I think they just celebrated their anniversary for this win uh, not too long ago. And some of the team members came back for a celebration. Um, but yeah, they got to come back together. Um, but uh, Duffy Bass Field, which is over 
um, really more to the west of where Yuhai is now <laughs> in that in that location and named for baseball coach Duffy Bass. I'm not looking at the chat, y'all are. I'm running the PowerPoint, so you're gonna tell me later what, what's going on in the chat. Stephanie says it's Barton because she lived in the room that is top left. That was her window. <laughs> Oh, yay! Awesome stuff. Thank you. <laughs> That's fantastic. I think there's a story there. <laughs> I think yeah. we have a story. Is there anything you want to throw in before I go to the next slide, there, Barb? Um, I don't. I don't think so. Okay. All right. So let's head over to. Speaking of Central Campus, let's head over to the Student Recreation Center, <laughs> which lives over where Central Campus used to be. We talked a little bit about the Student Rec Center on our last presentation because the location of the current Student Rec Center, which opened in 2011, uh, is where Central Campus used to be and was eventually demolished to make the Student Rec Center. So some of these early photos that we're going to show you uh, here in a few minutes, some of these early photos, are actually, so that's the Student Recreation Center that used to be on the corner of Willow and Beach Streets. And it's now the Activity and Recreation Center for the town of Normal. So- We always said on the tours, a short walk from campus. <laughs> Is it though? <laughs> a short walk from campus. You're getting your exercise in, just getting <laughs> over to that facility for sure. Y'all hold out. This is Look at this, there is a juice bar in there. And I love that there is a juice bar, this old school, to me, it looks like, to yeah. me, this photo screams like 1960s basement bar in Chicago. But no, this is the juice bar that was in, that was in, the, in the student rec center on Willow Beach, which I love. No way, Maria. Current I, ISU softball coach, Melinda Fisher, was on that winning, on that team in that picture. Oh. We need to have a conversation. We need to we need to make these connections and have these stories. Do a little oral awesome. history. I would love to get some oral history for archives. So we'll we'll have to connect once once we get get done with the presentation for sure. Uh, oh right, so here's some uh, a photo of them playing basketball in the student rec center over on Willow and Beach Street. Oh, the old so one. that yeah, the old one. So here's construction of the new one that went up in a oh, board of trustees approved the plans in 2006, but it took uh, quite a bit of time before the student rec center was eventually opened. Um, McCormick gym, uh, which was the original home for student, excuse me, a uh, school of kinesiology and recreation. So if you recall, they moved over to West campus in the sixties when Horton opened. Well, now they've moved back because McCormick gym was renovated along with the creation of the student rec center in 2011. So they moved back to campus, essentially kind of bringing it back to its original home. Uh, the planners really wanted this to open in time for the 100th anniversary of the official start of the phys ed program uh, in August of 2010, but there was some construction delays and they had to push it to January of 2011, which is why we mark it as 2011 is when the facility opened. And a really fun, for those of you who um, were residents of Central Campus, if you are walking north on Main Street, walking alongside the Student Rec Center, uh, those, those pillars that are kind of laying on their side, it looks like you can kind of sit on them, they're almost like benches, those actually used to be uh, part of Walker Hall. So those are, are oh. these pillars that used to, used to be part of the uh, construction, part of the building for Walker Hall. And they wanted to preserve some of that to kind of remind students to come back that, you know, we haven't forgotten Central Campus used to be here and those were parts of Central Campus that they used. Uh, again, walk north on Main Street. It's to your right, right as you pass by the Student Rec Center. Gotcha. It is just amazing the footprint it has mm -hmm. since it's connected to the other one and across. It's just amazing the footprint it has. And it is kind of cool to be driving down that street and you look up and there are people on the little bikes just pedaling away over your head. Or running over the street and you look close. Yeah, cool. yeah. I <laughs> used to be one of those people. <laughs> and then and then I got pregnant and I said, oh, I'm not doing this running thing. <laughs> so, I used and, to and instead of the juice bar, we now have a Starbucks in there. We do have a Starbucks. And again, when I was a runner, boy, that Starbucks got a lot of my money. <laughs> <laughs> it's coming out of there. It's six thirty more. Very successful Starbucks. Oh well, yeah. Um, and I'm sure someone's probably going to mention this. So I'll just get it out there real quick. Um, I I 
I understand that when a uh, central campus was in its final final year or so, someone buried a time capsule um, in its final years. And we get questions every so often about, do you have the central campus time capsule? No, I do not. And I gotta be honest, I don't think it was dug up before student rec center went up because nobody really knew where it was. And I'm fairly positive it's probably buried under the student rec center. So if you're looking for the central campus time capsule, we do not have it. It's probably gonna be a while before it gets dug back up. <laughs> so. Oh, bummer. Darn. Um, the last facility, I think it might be the, oh no, no, well, it's not second, it's second to last facility. Uh, we want to talk about why bring golf course, because it is such a, it, it makes up such a large footprint on our campus. And it was, it was the way that we know it now was developed during Dr. Bones president, the presidential uh, years he was on campus. Um, so really such a large footprint and it doesn't get often talked about with the other accomplishments, um, with the, with the footprint of campus that Dr. Bone made while he was here. So in this photo that you see, this is the original concept for the current golf course as we know it, close to it, because it was renovated not too long ago, but this was sort of the, the original idea uh, for the golf course. Although really, quite frankly, you know, we think of the golf course and they think, oh, 1960s, Dr. Bone, we had had some form of a golf course affiliated with the campus in South Fields, again, South Campus Fields, as far back as the 1920s that we can find at archives. So really the idea that there's always been golf with the university, it's, it's, it's a pretty, we're pretty sure that it's been there at least for a majority of the university's time. Here's Dr. Bone in those fancy little shorts <laughs> hitting a golf ball. Uh, Dr. Bone did open the golf course uh, with the first hit, the first golf ball hit, if you will. Isn't that great? Yeah, is it? And I love this. I, I'm always a fan of the color photos anyway, right? But this is such a gorgeous picture of, of what that was, what that was in the 1960s and how that was in the 1960s. Wow. Um, he, Dr. Bone hit the first hit, uh, the first shot in 1964 when it opened. So the uh, facility and the golf course itself was renovated by an alumni, uh, D.A. Wybring, in 2000 and uh, reopened it in 2001. And then it was named for him in 2007. So it was originally, for you golf fans out there, a regulation nine hole with a smaller nine hole on site. And it is now a par 71 course. Uh, and I, I don't know about y'all, but if this isn't a golf shop, the golf clubhouse photo, I don't know what. <laughs> That's such a great photo. And I really love, love this. this. <laughs> when I was showing Barb the presentation, when I threw it together, we both went, oh. <laughs> this is perfect. You can look at this photo and know exactly what decade it's from. <laughs> if, if the oh, jean shorts God. don't give it away, the plaid pants definitely do. So, <laughs> I see my bottom. I, I just, this is such a great photo. Uh, anything you want to throw in on this one, Barb? Um, more of a question. Mm -hmm. um, did they build the president's house out there when they moved the farm or before? I think it's, I, I, uh, you know, you're catching me on a, on a, on a brain fart. I want to say it was, I think it was after, after they moved, after. I would have to be after they moved the farm. So I want to yeah. say after. The house, the house is so close. Like mm -hmm. um, President Boschini had little tiny kids. He had little bitty kids. Yeah. And the presidents before had not. So they kept finding Teddy in the sand traps playing in the sand because he was like three. <laughs> So they had to build him a um, like a playset to keep Teddy from getting bumped on the head with a golf ball somehow. You know, it's like, no, 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 come back home, Teddy. Nobody wants to hurt Teddy. <laughs> no. yeah. Poor like, Teddy. No. Like, no, no, no. Well, we do want to mention, and we do have a couple of honorable mentions, what I've, I've been calling them, but there's a few more spots we do want to mention. Uh, because they they mean a lot to a lot of Redbird alumni, so we do want to put them in there. We just didn't have a lot of time to to do full slides for them. So very quickly, uh, we do have the Kaufman Football Building, uh, which opened in 2000 and really was the first name space named space for a benefactor, which was Fred and Donna. So there is the Kaufman Football Building uh, right next to. Twenty one years old. I'm sorry. What? That's twenty one years old. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I know. It's not that long ago. Yeah. Not I, I, 
I got to stop saying the new Kaufman football building. Yeah, no, I mean, you can say it. I mean, it's new comparatively to some like Cook Hall. So sure, it could be, it could yeah. still be new. <laughs> wow. Um, it's which, beautiful inside. It's a gorgeous facility. If you've never been in there, I would recommend popping in there. We we have a little, we helped out with the, an exhibit that they've got in there of football history. So uh, when you first go in, take a look at those exhibit cabinets or they're toward the front. Um, and we can't not mention Tri Towers uh, when we talk about athletics on campus, because when those went up, a lot of athletes, because athletics had moved over to Westside, a lot of athletes lived in those facilities. And very quickly, I have to tell you all, um, I was at a tailgate for homecoming, oh gosh, maybe five or six years ago now. And I had a gentleman, uh, he, had, he had imbibed a bit. And he walked up to me at my tailgate and he said, are you the archivist? And I said, and I'm, of course, I was not in job mode. And I went, oh, of course, yes, I am. He goes, ah, come down, come down. I got to I got to tell you something. And he walked down and they had all been having a good time. And they had some posters from their time in the 70s. And they were showing off the posters that they liked to. Unfortunately, they had laminated them, but they were showing off the posters and talking about their time. And one of them said, ah, I was the mascot when I. When I was uh, here, the mascot didn't have a name, but I was the mascot. I went, oh, tell me about being a mascot. And that if you were a mascot, you had to live in Tri Towers because you had to get over to the fields very quickly. I uh, was talking about uh, how the costume that he had at the time, which mostly was created by students at the time, was molting all the time uh, and just had a good old time telling me at tailgate about how he got to be a Redbird and how he got to be the Redbird mascot before we got cool. to Reggie. That Before we got cool. yeah, yeah yeah Lincoln's Dining Center between you know in the middle of those three where the athletes live we um we have a beautiful historical display in there now about the athletics it's really nice and we have a sample of all the Redbird different sports uniforms up behind plastic and. Some of them, I freely admit, I got to guess what they are. It's like, what does that shirt do? I don't know. Um, How did I not know but about this? It is very cool. <laughs> I, need to, I need to go investigate this. I did not know yeah, this. It's oh. turning out really nice. Oh, I will go yeah. see. That's a, Oh, I'm going to go check it out. Uh, and then just a few more. I've got, a, again, another aerial because these are just so, so difficult to find these photos. Um, you might notice that football, that is the old Duffy Bass, where that used to be what was eventually uh replaced with redbird arena so there's there's that location there uh oh. so we've got uh the gregory street tennis courts which are there uh the uh, uh i can never barb what street did you live off of <laughs> at uh, adelaide. Adelaide. Adelaide, adelaide thank you i always mispronounce it adelaide street soccer field uh redbird track and field complex that's over there again the doug collins and william robbins uh really robinson statue and the most recent uh, Redbird Remembrance Memorial, which went up September of 2015, which is also over uh, in West Campus. So it's beautiful. And it's a gorgeous, and it's definitely Good. one of those places that I recommend, uh, both of us frankly recommend to just, it's a great place to reflect. It's a nice, it's a nice remembrance and a place to reflect. So There's that is it. In, in between those two, in between the memorial and the, other statue, there's the Billy Quigley Memorial Bench. Yes. With, he was a student who, he was in the university program board and he passed away in a tragic car accident and the students um, wanted to mark a thing for him. He had been, his parents taught a story of how when he went home for the holidays, he was talking about what he did on campus and he told them, you know, I'm, I'm kind of a big deal down there. <laughs> so the bench says, and Aunt you know, in memory of Billy Quigley, you'll always be a big deal at ISU. Yeah, I it do love, I do love that bench. I, I, you had told me that story before and I really love that story. That <laughs> you'll always be a big deal. <laughs> Cause so, he, he, he was okay. an officer. Yeah, he, he was an officer in UPB and he was just like, mom, I'm, I'm a big deal down there. You don't understand. <laughs> Those redbirds, I'm a big deal with those redbirds. Exactly. <laughs> I'm a big deal. So there's our email. If you have questions please. or maybe you've got stuff or maybe you want to talk to us about archives, please email us and we'll be happy to talk to you. Thanks, everybody. And I'm going to stop screen share. Oh, Stephanie says, wasn't 
the, the house, right? Wasn't it built afterwards because it would have been in the middle of the farm? Right, yeah. Right behind the house is still is a horticulture center and in, in farmland. So yeah. it'd mm -hmm. be like smack yeah. in the middle. So my guess is that it would have been built after the farm scooted yeah. out to Lexington. But yeah, I've been known to be wrong, but yeah, I, I think know my Redbird history. But, <laughs> but if you say it with confidence, we will right. believe you. Well, you, you two did a, a lovely job. And I honestly didn't know a ton about the, um, the uh, athletic facilities um, either, Barb. So this was very um, informative for me. And, and oh, good. Um, we got something to chat what I just missed here. Um, yeah, Maria. Yeah, there is still some farmland. Um, I would just right did here. a tour out at... Um, Horticulture Center. And so Jessica Chambers, if anybody on this call um, has an opportunity to, to check out the Horticulture Center, which is basically across the street from Heartland Community College, mm -hmm. Jessica Chambers is just, she has so much knowledge and she did, we did, we walked around the whole thing and she did, did talk about how there was still farmland out there and how many acres was still out there considered farmland. Corn and um, soybean fields along Gregory and mm -hmm. Parkside in yeah. addition to the Hort Center. The house was built in 72 and the farm moved to Lexington closer to 2000. She works in the ag department. So thank you. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Thank you. I just got a donation of ag materials. So so I, I thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> this is great. I had one question that I, I don't know why I don't know the answer to this. Is there's no longer a pool in McCormick, correct? I mean, not not that's being used to my knowledge. I don't think it's being used. Um, I think they took the pool out of McCormick because they yeah. put the flat pool in the fitness center. Right. Yeah. And that, and that reconstruct that when it the construction of the, the new rec center yeah. and then they yeah. remodeled the inside of McCormick. And I do remember a fun story told to me by um, President Maris Al Bowman is. Um, it was very important to him to keep the outside facade of McCormick mm -hmm. to, yes. for it to remain because um, he felt that it very much made the look of that end of the quad. And so yeah. even though that the inside got all re, re mm -hmm. um, finished and redone, the outside, except the windows are new, newish when mm -hmm. it they yeah. replaced the windows, but the outside very much looks like um, how it has always looked. Um, so that you walk yeah. through those doors and it's like magic. Yeah, it is. Yeah. And it I just, I love awesome. telling that story because I give a lot of alumni tours to reunions that come back and mm -hmm. they, you know, they instantly have memories of having to take a required physical education class there, or maybe they majored in physical education. Mm -hmm. And so it, it means a lot to them that 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 building still remains very much the same look. Yeah. Let me see. I don't think we had any questions, so I will pause just a second to see if anybody wants to pop any uh, questions in, but I'm going to give a little plug to our, our series. Obviously, if you're on this call, you received um, information about how to register for this series. We'll have another one um, at the end of August that is going to focus on our College of Education. Um, so if that appeals, appeals to you, please join us. Um, and for that one, and then we have another one in September that mm -hmm. is, which one? Do we remember gals? That's, I think, I think that was maybe homecoming. Were we doing homecoming? The history, in yes. Oh, yeah. that's right. In September, we're going to do something a yeah. little bit unique. We're actually going to do a live feed and April's going to walk us through um, this historic homecoming display in September to help kick oh, off nice. homecoming, yeah. which we're celebrating 100 years of homecoming this year. So that'll be super fun. And she's going to walk through her exhibit that will be mm -hmm. in Milner Library during the month of um, September and October. Um, so end of the end of the semester. It'll be a fall semester, semester actually. Mm -hmm. And so if we can't if you can't make it back to campus, join us for that that Facebook Live um, information about that will go out so you can get a behind the scenes tour with April um, live in action. And uh, I have a hand Kate, raised. Kate Shard raised her hand. Kate, if you've got a question, I I can't bring you on, but you can type it in the chat if you have a question. I'm like I don't know what to do. Maybe she, she changed her, her mind. Um, but we just. Want to thank everybody. This um, session is being recorded, so we're going to post it on our virtual um, events page. And I will have 
Um, I will have everybody, um, I'll send a thank you to everybody with the link once I get that link. Kate, that is April's archives. So that is actually out. Oh, good in question. Archives. <laughs> that is what her <laughs> world looks like. So all those boxes, all yeah. the shelves contain all of the history of ISTU. It's amazing to go and get a tour of that um, yeah. facility. The organization alone makes me as a uh, a super home editor just <laughs> so happy and it feels so good to go through the archives and see the work that that april has done maybe maybe there'll be one day i'll i'll do a maybe a live tour of archives we'll yeah, like a, we, yeah, yeah we'll you're live stream your 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 um archives road show that you've been working on with me that, oh that, oh that's, so that's right coming. so so that's coming in later um, September also. It's pre-recorded, but we are going mm -hmm. to be doing that on YouTube so April can chat live. Um, yep. but watch out for that. So if you're interested in seeing behind the scenes of the archives, April actually, she forgot because she's so darn busy. Um, so, but, there's so much going on. together for us. And we've been working on that for a couple months, um, editing and all that stuff. So that'll be coming out in um, September-ish. We're still finding the, the right date. So look out yeah. for that um, marketing. But with that, I want, I don't think we have any more questions or comments. So I want to thank April and Barb. Thank you all for joining us this yes. evening. And we will see you next month. Have a all great right. rest of your night. Go birds. Thanks. Go birds. Bye, Bye. everybody.